and just recently moved to Vernon, New Jersey. And I discovered this store called Pandora's Box in Lafayette, New Jersey, which is just a few miles away from where I live. And they have a huge collection of pro wrestling memorabilia. And to talk about that, we have Eric and DJ, the owners of Pandora's Box. And guys, thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, thanks for having us. Good morning. It's an honor to be here. All right. Thank you for joining us. And I also know you do uh, some meet and greets as well. We'll get into one that you're going to have later on at the end of this month. But let me go to first to you, Eric. Um, what is the state of pro wrestling memorabilia right now in 2021? I think it's hotter, hotter than ever. Um, there's been a, a huge resurgence um, with uh, old uh, Hasbro stuff, um, LJN, like the older LJN line, um, the older AWA figures. Um, the internet has really helped to push the, um, um, you know, the resurgence because it's, it's opening up um, all these younger kids that are getting into, a, you know, AEW and, and, you know, some of the newer stuff and they're being able to go back and watch, you know, all these, you know, amazing, you know, events and uh, kind of connect with those larger than life personalities. So we have little kids that come in all the time and it's like, oh, you have any, I want Ultimate Warrior or I want Hulk Hogan, you know, or Andre the Giant. So it's nice to see um, that, you know, that, that, element is is driving the, the the collectible market too so um it's everything everything from old to new everything is super hot right now so this is interesting tommy because you know and i know this from my you know from my daughter so guys like a lot of the newer fans are really into the older stuff right now it seems because i go into your store first of all every time i walk into your store there's always people in your store it's always packed so even though there's the internet I would think, you know, DJ, a lot of people just like to walk into the store, be able to visually see the merchandise on the shelves. Yeah, it's like that feeling of nostalgia. You kind of walk in and it's everything from your childhood. You know, we got stuff from the 60s, 70s, and then a lot of the wrestling stuff starts in the 80s and the 90s. Um, even stuff from only like, you know, the last 10 years, stuff you can't get at the store anymore. Uh, you know, you can't go to a Walmart and go get, too many different wrestling figures right now that just the shelves are just kind of empty there's nothing there um so without a store like this you really can't get anything guys do you have uh, a personal favorite um piece of memorabilia that you have in the store oh geez we got <laughs> yeah. we got a lot of we got a lot of stuff probably i don't know I mean, the Black Card Hogan is really rare. The Star Toys Ultimate Warrior. I put a couple pieces back up here. Um, yeah, I like this. It's a stretch Macho Man, where like it's a stretch Armstrong. I think it was 1989, and yeah. uh, they made like a series of the WWF stretch guys. And I think it's just filled with molasses. So not many of them really survived because it's just like a, a vinyl stretchy figure filled with with goo and when the kids got it you would rip the box open and you know you tear off an arm or a leg yeah, go everywhere. and then it's just gonna <laughs> ooze everywhere and snap you know snap all over the place i actually have one at home that was uh it wasn't a wrestler it was like a donald duck one and it popped and it just oozes and it just makes this dried goo afterwards so they didn't really last yeah but that's kind of cool they're pretty rare as Ted DiBiase says, everybody has a price. Is there a piece of memorabilia that you have in your store that you don't want to ever get away with or your personal memorabilia? Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe this mint on card ECW Tommy Dreamer figure. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty priceless. I don't know if we could ever, ever sell that. Yeah, we got to have you come inside yeah. someday. We that would be a stupid there. move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, probably the the black card Hogan. Um, this was like later in the life cycle of the uh, LJN figures. This was at the very end. Um, and it's almost like, you know, if you're familiar with the last 17 Star Wars figures, um, they were on the shelves at the very end of the life cycle of 
the Star Wars toys. So nobody really bought them. So that inevitably makes them the most rare, most hard to find uh, after a certain amount of time passes. So uh, to have this guy sealed on card is is very expensive. He's he's well over two thousand dollars. Wow. For me, I mean, I have and all this stuff is like you said, it brings you back to your childhood. I have a uh, Terry Funk's branding iron from uh, my first ever main event, uh, October wow. 20th, 1995, where we also may or may not have set the ECW arena on fire. I don't want to <laughs> reasons. <Yep. laughs> but um, I have that branding iron and that's something that, you know, it's why I have a branding iron in my home is uh, one mm -hmm. thing, but because it's special to me. And I know like, yeah, I could probably get a nice piece of uh, change for, but it's just, I won't, I'm one of those people that literally just keep adding to the collection and never get rid of it. And one day I'll probably just, you know, probably when I die, just give it to mm -hmm. somebody. I'll leave it to Dave in my will. Um, Thank you, but Tommy. <laughs> there's a lot of things. I, so, uh, f a friend of mine gave me a Nick Bockwinkle shirt that he wore in of his own face that he wore in mid South when he wrestled Jerry Lawler in, in Memphis. And he was just like, Hey man, I've had this for a long time. My wife said, I got to get rid of something. Would you like to have it? And I was like, absolutely. And it's something like that. I will always look at and just be like, I have a piece of history. So I have weird stuff. Is there anything where fans come in and have offered you weird stuff besides Dave LaGreca? <laughs> uh, yeah. We won't, we won't go into what, Dave, what Dave's <laughs> offered us. <laughs> I got a feather from Jay Strongbow. You give me that Hulk Hogan black card. No, you know, I, I, you know, the, okay, you know what? It was crazy before. Just before, I don't want to interrupt you, Dave. But uh, speaking of Jay Strongbow, his uh, what was it, his niece? Is it niece or she? Cousin? She came in here um, not too long ago and was like, you know, telling us about how she would go to Andre the Giant's farm and like hang out with with him and and you know her uncle. And that she had, if we were interested in potentially buying his original headdress, um, That's she fucking cool. disappeared. I don't know. We tried, I think we called her like 500 times and scared her off because we were like, of course we I want I would say that. that could be a little suspect because one, how are you going to know it's the same one? And two, it got ripped up a lot, man. That was how they used yeah. to do it. Well, she had yeah. pictures she showed us of like in a hallway of it in like this glass with like her with him and, and stuff when they were, you know, when he was alive. Um, so we, we didn't really think it was bullshit. That's why we were so kind of, you know, hardcore about getting in touch with her, but yeah, she just disappeared. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for those who are listening right now, if you go to the Sirius XM app later today, we're going to have the video up. So you're going to be able to see these items because they're pretty cool. The items that both uh, Eric and DJ are showing us, uh, this morning. And I know for myself, because like I discovered this, sh this store, I brought my brother in there and now my brother's a fan of the store. And, and again, this is in Lafayette, New Jersey. Uh, and it's, it's amazing. And there's just Tommy, I'm telling you, you got to come because there's just aisles of these pro wrestling figures. And I remember back in the day and, and Tommy, you know, this, you know, I loved all pro wrestling. So when those AWA Remco figures came out, I was ecstatic and they were terrible. The AWA <laughs> figures. But now, guys, those are like major, major collector's items now. Correct? Those AWA figures. Yeah. Yeah, they're all like uh, over $100 on the card and $20, $30, $40 loose. You don't really see that many of them. They also did a lot of guys that never got figures anywhere else, really. Like Gagney when he was with Hennig and like, you know, yeah, that was like his, words in yeah, time. like they didn't get a lot of merch, which is kind of crazy to me, but you know, until like, you know, Mattel or whatever does an elite for them, you know, flashback or whatever, uh, that's all they have. So how many times has uh, Brian Myers or Matt Cardona showed up at your store? Actually none. Um, we've tried getting in touch with them a few times cause we're only like an hour and change away, you know, from, uh, from where they were filming, I guess, out in Long Island. Um, we don't know what's going on with them. They, uh, he, he actually messaged it. We had a sealed WWF color form set that we had uh, posted on Instagram. And uh, I think Matt had messaged you about Yeah, it. he messaged me. And I actually told him I was going to put it in the back. And uh, I put it in the back for a while. And then I messaged it back a couple months later. He's like, you didn't come get that? And he never responded. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're listening, 
we'd be we'd be we'd be more than happy to have you guys here. He spent a lot of money on uh, Greg Valentine, so uh, kind of oh. sent him back probably. Then he got fired. It's a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, but you know what though? I mean, the the collection stuff is great. And the other thing that I love at Pandora's box, it's not just the figures and the pieces of memorabilia, Tommy. As you know. Uh, where you can always get get me, and it's a soft spot, and I can't help but buy everything that I see, are the magazines. <laughs> and they have a, a, a huge box of the pro wrestling magazines. They have a lot, Tommy, from like 1981, a lot of wrestler, inside wrestling, pro wrestling illustrated. So they have the magazines as well. As far as pro wrestling fans, what is the one thing that is attracted most to the to the wrestling fans that come into your store? Probably, I mean, like, so we have a huge warehouse too that's pretty much just filled with I mean we do you know Transformers and GI Joe and and you know Masters of the Universe and Dukes of Hazard we do everything on the spectrum but uh you know wrestling is a big passion of ours uh, growing up you know we've known each other since we were 7 or 8 years old so we grew up playing with a lot of like these toys and you know doing pile drivers with our wrestling buddies out of like tree houses and you know like those are fond memories for us so um down in the warehouse, we have, you know, tons and tons of, of stuff. So when we had found all those Hasbros, I think that's really what sparked. Uh, we had found a, bought a collection of like over 500 carded Hasbros. Um, and uh, people were posting it all over the internet. And they were like, oh my God, like, look at this. And we were getting calls from guys in like Michigan that like, were like, I'm going to fly there tomorrow morning and I want to buy everything. And so that's kind of what sparked, I think, a lot of like our notoriety with like some of the wrestling merch in the area. Um, but I don't know what people come in most for because we do so we do so many different, you know, things like from older to, to new. That's but, probably the biggest part of it is that we do a little bit of everything. So awesome. you're not just stuck with one genre. It's basically everything from, you know, A to Z. All right. So one thing that you also do at Pandora's box is that you do have meet and greets. And I know you've had a lot of big time wrestlers come in in the past. I know Al Snow is going to be joining you guys at the end of this month, correct? Yep. yep. It's uh, Saturday, January 30th from 12 to 2. I'm thinking, Tommy, at some point when this whole thing is over with this pandemic and everything, you and I got to do a show from Pandora's box. No, sure. Oh, that'd be incredible. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yep. And if you if you can hold that Tommy Dreamer ECW figure for me, like if you can hold that off to the side. Oh no, man. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's gonna that's gonna be an expensive uh, purchase when you when you get here. All right. Uh, we're we're so saying Tommy. I think uh, Tommy, we try actually. I think we tried to get you up here not too long ago when uh, when Sandman was here. Yep. But you were uh, you were wrestling that day, so you were preoccupied yeah uh, i'll tell you that uh, on the off the air because uh i found out about uh, that through dave i didn't know anything about it so uh, oh no kidding oh, okay <clears throat> all right well then <laughs> well all right then <laughs> there you go you got your answer now that but you you need to have like a busted open section in your store with tommy dreamer mark oh, yeah. and bubba ray dudley figures because i figure that would be like a main attraction and I, I do. I, I, I've mentioned you guys before on the air. I know my brother's mentioned you on the air as well. Um, Lafayette, New Jersey, uh, Pandora's Box. Believe me, it's worth the trip. If you live a little bit away, so most people probably do, um, mm -hmm. it's worth the trip. It's, it's a beautiful – first of all, it's a beautiful town, Lafayette, New Jersey. But I'm telling you right now, it's probably one of the biggest memorabilia stores that I've ever walked into. Usually they're – pretty small you guys have a, a, a great space uh, a lot of merchandise not just pro wrestling but star wars like you said gi mm -hmm. joe there's some old school records and vinyl old t-shirts as well so uh it, it's definitely an awesome sh uh store for sure thank you thank you and tommy you and i gotta do a show from there are you kidding me i'll be stealing stuff off the shelves yeah. i'll do I'll bring my com my little comrex box i can go wherever I just, you know, that's cool. <laughs> Stand outside and do it. All right, yep. guys. So, again, uh, at, at, once again, Al Snow coming up on what date again? Uh, it's the 30th, January 30th from, from 12 to 2. Al's going to be here. The last Saturday of this month. And also, you know, if you, if you, if you want to meet me, 
on random uh, afternoons and evenings, I just find my way <laughs> into <Yeah>. Pat <laughs> So, uh, again, Eric and DJ, thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate the time. Thanks no, for thanks. having us. Yeah, really appreciate it, guys.